let us have a look at everybody's favorite section, Bank Recon. So, <laughs> terrible joke to start things off. Uh, I know most of you hate it, don't want to see it ever again. You're just waiting for your final exams to be over. So, let us take a look at Mango Traders. The information relates to Mango Traders for June 2023. The business uses the official bank statement, which is received on the 26th of each month. Uh, calculate the following on the 30th of June, 2023. So we've got our cash journals, our bank account balance. So we fill it in here, we fill it in here. We've got a bank recon, and we've also got a really nice theory question at the end. So let us complete our journals, our cash journals. So total receipts would refer to the CRJ and total payments would refer to the CPJ. So our balances of 81,300 and 80,620, it's in bold in the answer booklet, so we don't need to fill it in. Uh, the amounts are coming from here, just in case you were wondering. So let us begin. Let's have a good look at everything. So EFT 816 to A stationers is correct on the bank statement. So it's 4,700 here, 7,400 here. That's a 2,700 difference. And that's going to be a receipt to us because it's correct on our bank statement. It's indicated as 7,400 here. That's too much. So they're saying that we paid too much. So we reverse it. We reverse it and it goes into our total receipts column in our CRJ. Okay. EFT 792 to BK Builders was incorrectly recorded in the June cash receipts journal. It was incorrectly recorded. It was an EFT that was recorded in our CRJ. So we need to take it out of our CRJ and add it back to the CPJ. So that's going to be 6,200 times two. One of those like double entry kind of questions. Um, and we can simply plug it in here. Okay, I'm just leaving a bit of space and you'll see why a bit later. The direct deposit by G Glenn was for monthly rent. So that 14,600, um, that is an inflow, it's money coming in, it's going to be a receipt. So we can plug in our 14,600 here. Okay, so we've dealt with the first three, you know, just make some kind of marking so you know it's done. EFT 818 to VX garage was for repairs to a company vehicle. So it was to a company vehicle, wasn't own repairs, personal use, nothing along those drawings lines. And the owner neglected to submit the transaction record slip to the bookkeeper and no entry was made in the books for 818. So that 3780, it's going to be an outflow. It's going to be a payment, 3780. Okay, and the monthly transaction fees were duplicated on the bank statement. So that 540, it's duplicated, plug it in here, as well as our cash deposit fee, that would be bank charges. So you can just give them a round number of 860. Or alternatively, you can show it as 320 plus 540 on two separate rows. Uh, we've got a few entries in the cash journals. The owner withdrew 11,000 from an ATM to pay wages. So that's a withdrawal. It's going to be a payment. It's an outflow. We can plug in our 11,000 here. And it's important to note that also goes into our bank uh, recon, um, as well as our transaction fees. So do those, these two figures will go into our bank uh, recon as well. So uh, let's just go back. So we've dealt with our 2,700. We've dealt with the 14,600. Um, what about interest? Interest received. We didn't deal with it. So we've dealt with everything here so far. Uh, and we can plug in our 240 as well. We've also dealt with the 3780. We just didn't make a cross. So it's important to know what you're working with so that you don't deal with the same figure twice. And it just makes everything easier to look at and to understand. And everything seems to be in good working order here. Uh, if we just look at our outstanding deposits, this 30,000 amount has not been accounted for anywhere. So we plug it in to our total payments. And do we do the same with the 18,200? No, because it was on the 30th of May and our cutoff is the 26th. As you guys can see there, it was the 26th. So we don't deal with it. So we just deal with the 30,000. So 81,300 plus 2,700 plus 14,600 plus 240 gives us a nice round total of 98,840. There's 80,620 plus 30,000 plus 12,400 plus 3,780 plus 320 plus 540 plus 11,000 gives us 138,660. Now we can calculate our bank balance. So we had a favorable bank account balance of 49,100 and we add our receipts 98,840. We subtract our payments. 138, running out of space, 660, and we get 9,280. 
Okay, it's important to note that this figure also goes into the bank reconciliation statement, that 9,280. Okay, and now we can start filling in our bank recon as well. Um, also, this 18,200, it's, it's also been accounted for, um, and it did not fall into uh, our period from last month. Sorry, I just want to make a small correction there. Um, the, the month given was May, uh, so it's already been accounted for. Um, had it said 30th June, then we still wouldn't account for it because it's outside of our period. Okay, so our bank recon, we have our balance as per, remember you are not allowed to abbreviate, I'm just doing it to save a bit of space, uh, balance as per BS. Ooh, that's a that's a bad word, but it means it means bank statement. Get your get your head out the gutter. Uh, we have our OD that doesn't mean what you think it is. That's outstanding deposit. We have our outstanding EFTs. It's gonna be the nine four four and the nine four five. We haven't dealt with it yet. Uh, our outstanding deposit here is gonna be the thirty one thousand five hundred. So that's gonna be just the outstanding deposit. There's no uh, number attached to it. So simply outstanding deposit is fine. Uh, like we said, our ATM withdrawal charges. We also plug that in here. So ATM withdrawal for wages, anything along those lines. That's what I would write down. Uh, we credit our incorrect amount here um, as previously discussed. So just one of them, a 540. So we credit an incorrect amount. And then we have our balance as per our bank account, which is gonna be nine to 80. Okay, that's bank statement. This is gonna be bank account. So your balance as per bank statement, nine times out of 10 is just going to be a balancing figure. That's important to note. We do not take the 27,600. If you take this figure, well, I'm gonna have a heart attack. Don't just take that figure. It's always gonna be a balancing figure and we work our way up back to the question. So our outstanding deposit amount, like we said, is that 31,500 and our 9,700 and 13,300 as debit amounts for outstanding EFTs. So 9,700 and 13,300. Our ATM withdrawal for wages, that figure was given as 11,000. Credits that incorrect amount, the transaction fees that were duplicated, 540 goes on the credit side and the balance per the bank account here is 9,280. And this must balance. Look, your CRJ and your CPJ don't have to balance, okay? Just reminding you guys of some of the grade A's work. Your CRJ and CPJ don't have to balance, but your bank recon definitely has to. And your amount here is 43,280. I hope it was balanced. Okay, and that is it. We've dealt with pretty much every amount here. Everything has been dealt with. Spark wholesalers, um, just to emphasize this, um, it has been repeated. So the 19.3 and the 18.2 appear here. 19.3 and 18.2, they've already appeared. That's pretty much everything. And this does not affect 1.1.1 uh, or 1.1.2. It's our theory question, our internal control question. So explain two strategies that the business can use to address the problem of missing cash. So what happened? So it's under our note, the cashier reported that the cash to be deposited on 18 May was stolen while she was on her way to the bank and this amount must be written off. Okay, so what strategies can we utilize here? So maybe receiving and the banking of cash should be done by different people or maybe we can rotate duties or delegate duties, just have different people doing it at different periods. It's not a job that requires, you know, heavy skills or anything like that. Uh, you're simply uh, receiving and while banking, depositing the cash. So anyone can do it and we can rotate duties to prevent the mismanagement of the cash. Maybe we can request SMS notifications from the bank. So SMS notifications, that should be number two, but let me just plug in here. So division of duties, so just rotating. Um, and anything along those lines would have scored you the mark. Uh, maybe outsource transportation of cash to security companies. Um, you know, those guys that come and collect the money from the ATMs, you know, like sometimes at like spa or at like one of the centers and you know, they carry guns and it just looks really heavy. It gives my mom so much anxiety whenever she sees someone with a gun. Accompany the person in charge depositing the cash for additional safety, maybe encourage customers to pay online EFTs uh, to just reduce the burden of having cash. And that's the bank recon. It's not that heavy, just breathe. You can do it. Just get over that hurdle. I believe in you. Good luck.